Hi, welcome to my blog. My name is Tom Shu, and today we're going to talk about portraiture. We're also going to talk about your role as a photographer when you're making a portrait. Some of the things that you may not know can really be bad for your business and bad for your image as a photographer. See, everyone that has a camera nowadays is a photographer. Well, that's just not the case. A lot of photographers that are professional photographers have put in years and decades honing their craft and, and learning what you can and can't do to be considered a professional photographer. How much art have you studied in order to make better pictures? Have you looked at the masters that paint? Have you looked at light and analyzed light to make sure that you know what to do with it in order to make your subject look the best they possibly can? You see, there's a lot of things you can do as a photographer to prepare yourself for a shoot. One of the things that I always like to do is have a consultation meeting with my client that I'm going to shoot with. And this consultation solves a lot of problems for me. I just don't have someone show up and I just say, okay, let's just go in there and start making pictures. Because that just does, doesn't do myself any service as a photographer, but more so it doesn't do any, does, it does a disservice to my client. You see, when I'm talking to these people, I'm looking at their face. I'm seeing, do they have a crooked nose? Do they have scars on their face? How's their hair? Where's the part in their hair? Is one eye lower than the other? Is one eye bigger than the other? Is the ear lower than the other? And why would I want to do those things? Why would I want to know those things? Is it just my morbid curiosity to want to know what somebody looks like? No, it's not. You see, I use light as a tool to create shadows. What's more important, shadows or light? Well, without light, there's no shadows. But without shadows, there's no depth and detail. There's no sculpting or modeling on a face. And there's definitely no way to hide somebody's flaws without a shadow. Shadows are like the key to the whole castle. It's the key to the kingdom for portraiture, okay? So when you're sitting down with your client, you're going to talk about a lot of things. You're going to talk about wardrobe, some things that, they, that you might recommend they wear. For example, you don't want to shoot on a brown background. Okay, so if somebody has an idea that they have this brown wall at their house, you probably want to recommend that they don't do that. And why do I say that? Especially a light tan wall. Well, look at my skin tone. I have a tan colored skin. It's not white, it's not black, it's kind of tan. A lot of Caucasians have a tan colored skin. And you kind of end up blending into a tan background. Okay, so you want to talk about backgrounds. You want to talk about patterns of clothes. If you have a pattern a, a shirt or a blouse that has all kinds of big loud patterns and sequins and all these kinds of things that might be great if you're trying to sell clothes but to take a portrait of somebody a family portrait or a headshot for somebody that's not really gonna lend well to your strategy is to try to make them look good because that shirt's gonna be a distracting element you want to eliminate distracting elements in your background and you want to eliminate distracting elements inside their wardrobe like what's the neckline look like do, you, do they have a low-cut neck with their hair hanging out? Yeah, that's what you're looking at, is this hairy chest. When I button this up, it's not a distracting element anymore. And now you're concentrating on my face. I'm not saying that my face is something that you want to look at, but there's things that you can do to make me look better. Obviously, I'm a big guy, and I got, you know, this double chin. So if I go like this, you can see this, I've got a big double chin. Well, if I stand upright with my posture and I dive my head to the camera, I can eliminate that, okay? It might look weird what, to turtle your head out, as Peter Hurley calls it, turtle your head out, but it's forehead to the camera and down a little bit. Not down to here, but just forehead and down, just enough to where you can stretch that neck out, okay? Light is a big thing. For example, when I have my face broadly lit, this is called broad light. Most of my face is like a broad side of a barn is being lit. Okay, this is broad light. Well, a short light is kind of the opposite. The largest portion of my face or the broadest portion of my face is in the light. So it's tending to make me look heavier. You want to see me lose some weight? Watch this. So if I turn my head just like this, I take that large portion of my face and I hide it from the light. Now, the shortest portion of my face is in the light. The largest portion of my face is in the shadow. Okay, so just knowing these tricks, you can flatter your subject. You can make them look the best they've ever looked. You put things in the shadow that you don't want things to see. Um, say if somebody has a receding hairline, you don't want to light it, 
put a flag up there and knock it off and put it in the shadow. Do you think you could tell that I have a large forehead if you can't see the forehead? Take it away. Now you can see that I have a hairline. Okay? If I've got these big ears, do you think that you want to put my big ear in the light like this and see everything right here? Do you want to see that? Put me in profile to my big nose? How about hide my ear, put myself not with the lighted sight towards the light, right? Turn it away a little bit from the camera. Chin up and out and down. And I've lost weight, I've lost my double chin, and I've hid my big ears, okay? Anything that's in the light draws your attention. If you close your eyes and you open your eyes, you're going to see your eyes go right to the brightest portion of the image. That's why people put a vignette around the image so that you don't get lost in the frame of the image, that you get forced to the middle of the image. Okay, so let's get back to not necessarily lighting patterns. For example, like this pattern, some people will call Rembrandt. It's not really a Rembrandt because there's light in my eye. Look at Rembrandt's paintings. They don't have any light in the eye. If Rembrandt doesn't have light in the eye, then I'm sorry to say, if there's light in the eye where there's a triangle patch on the cheek, it's not Rembrandt. That's more of a loop lighting. So, as far as like lighting patterns, you see the shadow on my nose over here? This means my light's not high enough. Okay? This shadow should come down to the side of my lip. Okay? If you see this problem here, I'm not lit properly. You know, I can hide that shadow and make it appear to be lit properly, but I don't want shadow on my lip. There's lots of little tricks that you need to know as a photographer in order to call yourself a professional. So if you're hanging a shingle on the building and charging people money for portraiture, don't you think you owe it to your client and owe it to yourself to know your craft? I think it's very important to know your craft. So let's talk about just a couple more things you might want to talk about during your, your, your session, your, your pre-portrait session. Okay, when you've got them in there, talk to them about hairstyles, hair and makeup. You don't want to have a real unique hairstyle you want to have a classic hairstyle you know I've looked through those old photo albums that I've had when I was a kid and I see those you know 80s mullets and things like this I'm pretty embarrassed of those I don't want anyone to see those maybe my wife and kids but they even make fun of it so I don't really proud of those images however some of the good portraits that I had by people that knew what they were doing I'm proud of okay so make sure that when you're consulting your clients that you talk to them about a proper hairstyle something that will lend itself to the ages so that when they're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, they're proud of those portraits. Look how beautiful I used to look when I was this age. Okay, Not flip past that page real quick because they're embarrassed of their hairstyle. That's the same with clothes too. You know, Remember those big butterfly collar and bell bottoms? You know, Those aren't really in style today. So people would make fun of you. The big wide tie, you could have used a conservative tie. You could have used a regular shirt. It's up to you to point those things out. Makeup, you want to look natural, okay? You, you don't want your people, unless you're doing high fashion, you don't want your, your clients to have heavy smoky eyes and, you know, hooker makeup. I'm not saying that they're a hooker, but I'm just saying that that's an analogy I'm going to use to describe somebody that has too much makeup on. Do natural at the beginning and then build up to those really glamorous photos at the end of the shoot. Okay, don't start off there because you'll never be able to get those natural looking beautiful images, the ones that they're going to be so proud of when they get older. Okay, when you talk about uh, your portrait shoot, you might want to talk about bringing in the family. Okay, and color coordinating. For example, maybe someone they would all come in with like maybe a white turtleneck and tan khakis. That way, everyone in the group doesn't distract from each other. You, the idea is to get rid of distracting elements and hide things in the shadows that you don't want to see. Okay, So if you do your job right and you practice your craft and you learn everything you can about your craft, you will become one of the best photographers ever. Okay, I'm not saying everyone is. As Zach Arias says, he says it like this. Photography calls many, but it selects few. I'm not saying that I'm going to be a great photographer, but I'm saying that I won't fail as a photographer due to lack of effort in trying to learn my craft and refine my craft. I learn every day something new in photography, whether it's lighting or a piece of gear for advancing my, my business. Like I picked up a new recorder the other day, and I know nothing about audio. I'm trying as hard as I can to learn everything I can about audio. I'm not going to be a professional audio technician. I just want to deliver better content. I want to be better at my craft. This is the kind of drive that you need to succeed. So pick up some books, go to a museum, learn your craft, teach your clients well, 
And I want to thank you all for taking time to visit my blog today. Until next time, we'll see you soon.